Hello everyone and welcome to a presentation on the use of fly ash in concrete. This will be presented to you by Dylan Kennedy, Clayton Murray, and Eric Sandberg. The following topics are included in this presentation. First, a background of what fly ash is and its history is included, followed by a summary of mechanical properties of when fly ash is used in concrete, like the heat of hydration, workability, and compressive strength. Further, an explanation of long-term behaviors such as the lifetime strength and resistance to abrasion and corrosion. An explanation of environmental benefits including the recycled product and reduced emissions is also included. The advantages and disadvantages of using flash and concrete is discussed along with summarization of what this presentation is all about. After that we'll make some recommendations in regards to using flash and concrete. What is flash? Flash is a product collected from the burning of coal and is made of silica, aluminum, iron and calcium. There are two types of flash that exist, type F and type C. Type F is a flash with low calcium that has carbon contents around 5%. Type C is a flash with higher calcium contents and carbon contents less than 2%. The history of flash and concrete. Pozzolanic ash has been used in concrete for thousands of years as it was first collected from volcanic ash, which is similar to fly ash. Its first major use was in the Hoover Dam as it was used to repair a tunnel. Since the 1980s, the use of fly ash in concrete has been encouraged for various reasons to follow. To begin the comparison between concretes containing only Portland cement and those containing a mixture of Portland cement and fly ash, the physical and chemical properties of the two must be discussed. Physically, fly ash particles are slightly finer than those of Portland cement, while their distributions within a cement matrix are similar. Chemically, the two share a lot of the same chemical compounds, however the proportions of these compounds differ. For example, as shown in the table, Portland cement is mostly made up of calcium oxide, while fly ash is mostly composed of silicon dioxide and aluminum oxide. This section of the presentation is a discussion about the mechanical properties of fly ash concrete. I will begin with a discussion of the hydration properties. Fly ash has a notable effect on the hydration process of concrete. Fly ash reacts slowly with water, the slower, less intense reaction causes less heat to be produced at once. As seen in this chart, the more fly ash is added, the slower the reaction is, and therefore the lower the heat released. This is different than Portland cement, which has a very quick reaction, which would be a sharp spike compared to the gentle curves of this graph. I will now discuss the effect of fly ash on the compressive strength of concrete. Fly ash's final hydrated product is a large crystalline network which provides superior long-term compressive strength. Up to 50% of cement replacement will result in an increase of ultimate strength, as seen on this chart. Additionally, it can be seen that the addition of any amount of fly ash will reduce the early strength. It requires uh, approximately 91 days for fly ash concrete to reach 80% of its maximum strength, which is reached in roughly 10 days with Portland cement concrete. Another effect that the addition of fly ash will cause is in regards to the workability of the concrete mix. Particles of fly ash have a spherical shape, so when they are added to a cement matrix, they act as ball bearings, effectively lubricating the mix. This lubrication of the mix will increase the workability of the concrete, as shown in this figure that compares different fly ash additions to the corresponding slump of the mix. We will now explore the lifetime behavior of fly ash concrete. As seen on this graph, fly ash concrete has a continued appreciable strength gain, even years after its original pouring, due to, due to the drawn out hydration process. A CANMET study found that after 3.5 years, fly ash cement was almost two times as strong as its 28 day strength. It should be noted that the addition of fly ash will decrease the severe strength of concrete appreciably. I will now discuss the abrasion abrasion resistance and corrosion resistance of uh, fly ash concrete. The abrasion resistance is based entirely on the aggregate properties and the strength of the concrete itself. While fly ash may not directly impact the abrasion resistance, if the mix is designed to have a higher strength, this will increase the abrasion resistance of the concrete. Corrosion resistance is based on the permeability of the concrete. Fly ash, with its much finer particles and large crystalline network, makes the concrete much less permeable. And 
using an electric conductivity test, which is used to test permeability, the fly ash concrete is up to 29 times less conductive than regular Portland cement concrete. One of the major pros of or fly ash and concrete is that it's a recycled product obtained from collecting material from the combustion of coal. As concrete is one of the largest used construction materials, using fly ash as a replacement for Portland cement allows for a lot of air pollution from coal to be reduced, as well as the pollution from the Portland cement production. Collecting fly ash is now an air pollution control standard set forth in the U.S. Another thing is that it's reduced emissions. Regular Portland cement re contributes to environmental damage and CO2 emissions. So if we can re reduce the amount of production of Portland cement, the result is less CO2 emissions going into the atmosphere. Fly ash will always be produced as long as coal power is always being produced. For the next couple slides, we're going to go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of using fly ash in concrete. Starting with the advantages, as noted earlier, the addition of fly ash will improve the long-term strength of concrete. This can be of great advantage as long as the reduced initial strength is accounted for. As also explained earlier in the presentation, the spherical shape of fly ash particles creates a ball bearing effect that increases the workability of a concrete mix. This leads to a mix that is easier to place, pump, and results in less wear on equipment. Also noted earlier, the addition of flash will reduce the rate of heat produced during the hydration process. This is a major advantage for projects in which large concrete pours um, that see very little heat loss due to their volume are required. Another important advantage of using fly ash is that it provides resistance to chloride ion penetration. Uh, lower permeability, as explained before, means less penetration, um, which makes fly ash an attractive additive for concretes exposed to marine environments. And finally, resistance to alkali silica reaction expansion is another advantage of using fly ash in concrete. It should be noted that this re resistance is generally only experienced when using class F fly ash and is caused by the reduction of alkali hydroxides in the pore solution of the concrete when the fly ash is present. Now for some of the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is low early strength. As mentioned above, the addition of fly ash will dramatically decrease the early strength gains of a concrete mix. This becomes a major issue for situations such as low temperature pores where high early strength is required. Another disadvantage is the elimination of bleeding. The inclusion of fly ash to a concrete mix will reduce the water demand, lowering the amount of water required for the mix and all but eliminating the potential for bleeding. While this initially seems like an advantage, it actually is considered a disadvantage as the lack of excess surface water will require faster finishing and more diligence in terms of pre preventing plastic shrinkage cracks. Another disadvantage is the reduction of shear strength with the addition of fly ash. As mentioned above, there's a significant reduction in shear strength. Um, therefore, additional reinforcement or an increase in member thickness may be required during the structural design process. Reduction in bonding strength between the concrete and embedded steel rebar is considered another disadvantage. As, and not only does uh, the addition of fly ash reduce the bonding strength, but an increase in embedment seems to increase the effect as well. This becomes an issue in that you can't just simply add more embedment um, when you add fly ash. And finally, the final disadvantage of using fly ash is that it is, if it's class F, there will be an increase in the requirement for air entrainment admixtures. This is due to the fact that class F generally contains unburned carbon that has a tendency to absorb air entrainment admixtures. In conclusion, we've covered a background on fly ash concrete. We've discussed its mechanical properties as well as lifetime behavior. We then went into a comparison with standard concrete and explored the environmentally friendly aspects of fly ash concrete. We then went over the advantages and disadvantages. After researching for this report, here are the recommendations the group has come up with. The low heat of hydration of fly ash concrete is good for both hot weather concreting projects as well as mass concreting projects. The excellent long-term compressive strength of the fly ash concrete is desirable for many different types of projects. Doses that do not compromise the 28-day strength of the concrete are highly recommended for their environmental benefits for any type of project. We've also come up with uh, projects for which fly ash may not be ideal. Cold weather concreting requires special attention as the cold weather will compromise the effects of the fly ash. Do not use fly ash in any dose if high early strength is vital to the project. Special considerations must be taken if shear is needed for the project.
And these are the references that were used for this presentation. Any questions?